sad for me, you guys. He's married to me, and it's a lot to put up with. I'm not gonna lie, all right? Realtors can be a little crazy, okay? And I'm gonna show you how you guys can relate to realtors just a little bit better and understand where we come from in our business to integrate better. So, uh, not that long ago, I married Ronnie, that guy who just gave the last class. And it turns out I've been doing real estate for 17 years. He's been doing septics for 20 years. We had crossed paths several times in both of our careers and never really paid attention to each other, ever. We also were in different phases of our life, but we met each other, we got married, we did this whole septic thing together, and uh, 17 years later, I sold 600 homes. He's looked at God how many septics. Um, and I still actively sell 25 to 50 homes a year. So I'm not coming from a couch realtor position. I'm coming from, I do this every day, I'm active in the business, okay? And why should you listen to me? I came dressed in a dress today in high heels, not what you typically encounter in your workforce, right? You get a lot of realtors who maybe come and uh, aren't prepared to come and see you guys. But one of the things I want you to know is I actually work with my husband. I go on job sites with him. I know what he does. I know it better than any other realtor in my county and uh, maybe the state. I go on emergency calls with him. It ruins our date nights some nights, but that is the life we have together. And I've also been inside of a septic tank. Okay, <laughs> so there's a lot of different things that I do. Most of the time I sell real estate. Sometimes I dress as a bond girl. Just depends on what day of the week it is, okay? So just know that while you might get a bunch of blowhard realtors up here, I am not gonna sugarcoat my world or how it impacts you because I rely on the septic industry to help me sell homes, period. And some of you are gonna say, yeah, well, I bet your husband passes every system. Nope. In fact, he's failed over 15 systems that I've gone to go list. It happens. What do I do? I get it taken care of. My clients get it taken care of because any septic repair is going to reduce the potential sales price. Any septic repair for me, if it's a $20,000 repair, I can immediately take three times that off the sales price. Immediately. No one's gonna come buy that house. It's not lendable, it's not financeable. Doesn't get me a commission at the end of the day. So my first subject experience was in 2006. I was dressed in something like you see today. I was not prepared to walk out to a septic tank. My septic uh, inspector was standing over the tank eating a sandwich. Not me. Not him. <laughs> standing over the tank, eating a sandwich, pumping it out. I had no idea what I was supposed to be expecting. I didn't know we were gonna flush toilets. I didn't know what was gonna happen. Needless to say, I was incredibly sick to my stomach. Okay? <laughs> I was brand new, I was 24 years old, I was terrified, and I was actually covering for an agent who was out of the country. This was my first time ever. I didn't know what to expect, but I will say it was the most unpleasant experience I've had as a realtor. I left, I might have cried, I might have drank a whole lot that night. But what it taught me was that I wasn't prepared for my career at all. No one tells us after we get our license what you do, how it works, how anything happens. You get your license, you know how many square feet you're in an acre, and there you go, okay? So a lot of people will say, I don't wanna work with realtors. Anybody got any good reasons why they don't wanna work with them? You won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> they're, they're what? Annoying. Oh! No way! Oh, okay. All right. So you guys are on the same page as me. Their job always takes precedence over everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're terribly unrealistic. Yeah. They make way too much money for doing nothing. Right? Okay. They're greedy. I'm not going to give you any of my commission to pump this septic tank. Who do you think you are? Oh, they definitely act like they know everything, for sure. I see it today. Uh, and I train, by the way, I train over 1,400 agents in my county. I run a Facebook group dedicated to professionalism. Uh, I do live stream videos, I do coaching, I do mentoring. And I do that 
because if we're all better, you guys don't think those things about us, okay? Not saying that some of my competitors aren't this way, because they are. They are massive procrastinators. Someone said calling a day before closing. Yeah, it happens. They'll call my husband's company a day before closing, and they'll say, no, we can't get to it. Then my phone rings. Hey, Jen, I know you guys own First Call Septic. Is there any way you can get us in tomorrow? No. Oh, and they're lazy. They're so lazy. And I can say that because it's true. I know that they're lazy. This made me laugh super hard because I know you guys are always concerned about getting paid. Everyone's concerned about getting paid. So this made me die laughing. All right, if you think I'm gonna lose that half a million dollar payday because of one of 10 boo-boos, then you're out of your goddamn mind. Whoa, wait a second. You're making half a million dollars on this deal? Okay, you're making <laughs> That's every septic provider I've ever met. Are you guys getting paid? How, and what can you do to seriously verify that you're going to get paid? You heard Ronnie talk about how we've gotten stiffed by customers, and we have. And it's not fun. It's not enjoyable. But I think the largest concern is getting paid. You don't want to work for free. You don't want to do it for an expense. You don't want to have to go to collections. Nobody does, us realtors included. So we have a practice at First Call that the seller makes the payment. It's our first and very best option. And really, it's what we need to be doing. The seller needs to be paying for their own systems to get inspected and up. Is there poop anyway? It is their crap. The second option, realtor can make the payment. They can get paid out of closing. When they get their commission check, they can have it as a line item. The seller still pays it, but it gets paid out of closing. We all know that there are sellers who don't have enough money, who don't have the option, all their equity is tied up in their home, they can take it at closing. The very last option is to get paid from closing proceeds. We don't make a practice of getting paid out of proceeds. We try, try, try not to. If the sale fails and it's gone, you're probably not gonna get paid unless another sale comes along. It's not what we recommend. At First Call, we do it as a last resort option, only with realtors that we've used before. They have to be pre-approved for the transaction before we even come out. It is a huge risk to get paid out of closing. The escrow agent could lose the invoice, the agent forgets about it, now who pays it? The seller's gone, they've moved to Texas, they're out of here. So, what I'm about to discuss with you is really important for your business because I can show the track record of history. I've been with Ronnie for 10 years now. We've grown his business pretty substantially. I'd like to think it's in part to me, maybe. Uh, and really, 25% of our total business revenue comes from real estate transactions. And it's grown. It started at about 2% when we met a decade ago, and it's grown. And by now you've seen that we do the inspections and we record the videos. That's our process for every single real estate transaction. You're not gonna get 24 year old realtor almost throwing up on the job site because she has to attend a septic inspection. That's not gonna happen anymore. You do these inspections, you've got video proof, everybody knows that you were there. What you don't see in this chart it is that the relationships we create with those realtors and what that ongoing business continues to provide. So a realtor may refer us out for a real estate transaction and then goes, you know, they really educated me. I know a lot more about septics than I knew before. Now I'm gonna tell my clients, I'm gonna put it in my newsletter, when my clients that I currently have have septic issues, I'm gonna refer out that guy. I know it's really easy to get discouraged and frustrated with people who know it all, okay? <laughs> I deal with it quite a bit. I get every realtor who calls and says, the home inspection went fine, the water flushes, everything's good. That doesn't mean anything. Did you go open the lids? There's lids. 
Yes, there's legs. Did you test the pump? Did you test the alarm? Where is the drain field? Oh, it's down there? Did you walk to it? I know it's five acres. It's a long way for your little legs, but did you walk to it? Do you know where it is? That happens non-stop. I can't tell you how many realtors will sit inside during a home inspection and not even walk outside. They have no idea what's going on. So for most realtors, the education process is pivotal. Be patient with us, we're kind of retarded, okay? Like, be nice. <laughs> most of the realtors we end up working for end up becoming our biggest squawk boxes. They were the best advocates for our business. We don't have to pay to advertise. They call us and they tell everyone. They show my clients how it worked. They do this cool video. It's free. They don't charge any more for it. I don't have to worry about booking an inspection with first call. They're there, they do it. There's video proof. They email it to me. How much easier can they make my job? I don't know. Complimentary donuts every time? Can we work that in? That's right. So a lot of these realtors will continue to refer us, which then spills into our routine maintenance and our emergency and our repair business. So it just kind of spills over. So this is the process for realtors. This looks kind of confusing, but the very top shows you, this is the negotiation that happens when an offer happens. The contract gets accepted. We take their money. We laugh. We calculate how much we're going to be able to spend on our new Range Rover. <laughs> and then we do our inspections. We do preliminary title. So most of you guys are getting calls from realtors down here at the very end, probably after their 10 day inspection period. That's pretty common because they procrastinated it or they forgot or there's no green lids in the yard. So I don't know where it's at. Why do I care? So what we're going to talk about today is changing the flow of how the process works. And it's gonna seem a little weird that I'm telling you all the ins and outs of the realtor side of it, but there's a good reason why. Our state purchase and sale agreement has a standard OSS addendum. There are six different counties that vary from this, Skagit, King, Thurston, Mason, Kitsap, and Pierce. They require an inspection within six months of the contract being accepted. But for the most part, everybody's gotta deliver these maintenance records 10 days after the offer gets accepted. Additionally, they have to have it inspected and if necessary, pumped within that previous 12 months. So why would they not do it first? Any good reasons? Person still living there. Oh, people live in houses all the time when we check septics. Perfect. They don't want to spend the money right now. They don't want to spend the money? They're going to have to spend the money eventually. They'll fall through. They don't know about it. Still good for 12 months. They forgot. They forgot? Mm. They know there's a problem? Yeah, well, that's going to come up regardless. Mm -hmm. Do you want to negotiate and repair now, or do you want to negotiate after they've already beat you up on price? You took a $50,000 price reduction, there were $30,000 in other repairs, and now you're the last guy coming in. You're the bad guy. That's not a fun place to be. Trust me, as an agent who's had to negotiate price reductions, price improvements, whatever we're calling them now, um, and then repairs, and then more stuff comes up. The last thing I want to do is come back and say, oh, by the way, there's another three grand worth of the septic stuff. I don't like doing that. It's not fun. If you're the first person to get paid, you're going to get paid every single time. So we talk about front loading the transaction. And when I talk about that, we're now talking about doing the septic inspection first before you get an offer. We're not in the market we were two years ago where it gets listed on Wednesday by Thursday, there's seven offers by the weekend, there's 22. That's not the market we're in anymore. It has slowed down. We are pre-pandemic pricing, pre-pandemic uh, kind of motivation. So if we do the septic inspection before we even get an offer, you're the first to get paid. It's good for six months or 12 months, depending on your county. If you're the first person to get paid, there's no grief. Your customer's not going to be upset about paying you because they haven't already paid for 50,000 other things. Okay. That's also the reason we take the video. Someone says, well, I want to make sure it was done. Well, it's on video. 
It's undeniable proof. We were already there. We already did it. Every single buyer can have that video. Maybe they don't want a sand mound. Maybe they had a sand mound at their last house, and they said, I'll never buy another house that has a sand mound. Kind of a crazy reason not to buy a house, but they can see that video. That video can get uploaded to our side of the real estate transaction so buyers can see it. So now you ask, how do you market to sellers? We developed a pretty cool postcard we did uh, about a year into our relationship. And I said, let's start marketing to realtors. And Ronnie said, that's a horrible idea. <laughs> I hate them. I don't want to work with them. I said, you still love me, right? <laughs> and he does. So we created this postcard. We send out to every single new listing in our Tri-County area that is on septic. Because I want these sellers and I want these agents to know if they don't do it now, they're still going to have to do it. It doesn't change the timeline of when they have to do it. But if they do it before, it's one opportunity to keep the buyers off of their property. First of all, how many times do buyers want to come back? They have a home inspection. They've got a well inspection. They've got a septic inspection. They want to measure for carpet. Every time they're coming back, you're giving them another reason to object to buying that house. You're giving them another excuse, why not to? So if I can save someone time, money, stress, those are all things I think we could all agree upon, none of us really want. So if I can do that, it definitely speeds up the sale process as well. If I have a seller who needs $3,000 for septic repairs, Maybe I say, whoa, whoa, let's, let's pause the listing for a minute. Let's not have any showings during this time. Let's go ahead and wait till the septic repairs are done. We'll come back on the market. We can disclose it all. We have a good clean bill of health now. People will have assurances that knowing that we took care of it. So we get about an 85% return on these postcards. It's a 37 cent stamp, I think, these days. Um, we send them out to both the realtor and the seller. So I'm sure you guys have the ability to have realtors give you lists. You could always go on Zillow and just look at septic listings in your area as well. So this has been an incredible return for us in terms of marketing. Also, I'm a really big mouth, 1400 agents who I mentor, they all use first call or they don't get on the page. <laughs> <laughs> so how can you reach the realtor market? I tell people all the time, if you can teach them, if you can demonstrate your knowledge without eating a sandwich over the septic tank, please. Um, it's really, really beneficial. I don't think a lot of people understand how they work. I didn't understand how it worked. Uh, I've been married to Ronnie for 10 years and I still learn something new once a week that I go, oh, well that's the sand mound one was a fun new one. Uh, <laughs> I learn something new every single week, but I'm also <clears throat> not, oblivious to the fact that some people don't want to learn. So if you can either reach the realtor or the seller, the seller doesn't want the stress. The seller's going to ask their agent, hey, I got this postcard from the septic company. They say I could save some money if I get my inspection done now. Well, everybody wants to save money, I think, I hope. Maybe get it done now. Maybe make that your priority. Uh, a lot of realtors will think that they know it all. But if you can partner with a realtor, walk alongside them, be on the same team for a minute. I know, it's kind of hard. Um, it's gonna be something that they appreciate. Uh, have you been to any realtor's offices and delivered donuts? <laughs> I love donuts. So if you came to my office and had a dozen donuts and I went, oh, who's that company? Oh, maybe I should look them up. Maybe I should get to know a little bit more about them. Um, I'd say have a lunch and learn, but septic and lunches don't seem to go hand in hand, not super <laughs> well. Um, but have an opportunity where you can get in front of them. Every time your technicians are in front of a buyer or a seller or a realtor, that's an opportunity to make an impression. And eating a sandwich over a septic tank, not the impression I thought I was going to get. Uh, I didn't expect tea and crumpets, but uh, it was awkward. There were no gloves, no gloves on the sandwich hands. It was a little gross. Um, I didn't attend another septic inspection until I met Ronnie in 2010 for the first time. 
because I didn't know if I would throw up <laughs> again. <laughs> it was awkward. Since then, I can't tell you how many septic inspections I've been on with him, how many pumpings we've done together. We've driven cross country countless times to pick up septic trucks across the country and drive them back. Um, people think that I'm not a realtor anymore because of how much I work with him. But I love working with him. Who wouldn't want to work with him? Um, you know, I find that the more I explain to people the septic systems, especially realtors, I really try to hammer home. If you don't know it, say you don't know it, and it's okay. As long as you're honest about it, be accountable to yourself and say, hey, I don't know what I'm talking about. I do that on the phone all the time. I'll call for truck parts for Ronnie and I'll say, hey, I need to get this truck part. My husband gave me this. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Treat me like I'm five. Just tell me what I need to know. I don't know everything. I still learn things every single day. But what it comes from is a place of wanting to learn. If you can connect with these realtors, teach them what they need to know. And also, as m the more you start doing that, the more you're gonna start to see your call volume go up. We sold 125,000 homes in the state of Washington last year. How many of those were on septic? Any guesses? About 60% of them, okay? If you look at your business last year, could you have used a 25% bump? Don't tell me none of you couldn't have used a 25% bump. Fuel is up how much? Seriously. We could all use a little bit of a bump. Um, do you guys have any questions for me? What county are you guys in? We're in Clark, Cowlitz, and Skamania. You guys want to move to Thurston? <laughs> we don't do Thurston. Yeah, we don't go that far. We just stay within our tri-county region. That's a shame. <laughs> That's a hard one for realtors, I'm it's sorry. Hard one for realtors, I know. They're like, text me, text me. Uh, the, the hardest thing I think I find is that people who don't answer their phones, I don't want to work with them. I keep trying to call them, I keep trying to give them business, and they don't answer their phone. It's just as annoying for me as it is for you. The one thing I know you guys get a lot of is you answer the same question a hundred times a day. And as annoyed as you are that you just explained it for the last 10 minutes to this person, explain it to this person like they've never heard it before. Because your bad attitude, your bad feeling about the last call is going to impact that person's impression. And I know it's so much easier said than done, and I coach my realtors on this. If you're going to answer the phone, are you in a mindset and a place to answer the phone where you're going to do a good job? If you're not, don't answer the call. If you think, I need 30 seconds to just, the guy was a complete asshole. I need to like, take a minute, take a minute. You're gonna be better prepared on the phone. Pick up the phone, smile. You can hear the difference in my voice, my smile. Whereas if I'm pissed off, you're gonna know, right? You know? Okay. <laughs> I can joke with my husband because he knows. He's had to deal with a lot of things. He has dealt more with being my husband and the husband of a realtor than most people deal with. We have trashed out houses together where people have left garbage heaps of dumps all around the listing, okay? He's the last been, house had 10,000 pounds of garbage in it. 10,000 pounds of garbage in the last house. It was a lot. That's not every situation, that's not every deal, but he deals with a lot, he puts up with a lot, and I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate the fact that if I need him to come do something, we are a team. Yeah. So one of the things we come across a lot in this business is trying to upsell is what you would call it, but putting risers on tanks. And a lot of the sellers I've dealt with, no, nope, we'll put it on to the next guy. If they want to do it, they can do it. Is that something that you want to see about doing? Because it 
adds to the property value as easy maintenance and you know where the tank is? Yeah, so if I'm there with a buyer and I'm at the septic inspection and I'm watching this guy dig three feet down, also we don't dig three feet down, that's an excavator job, I will tell my buyers, hey, you can, you can either pay for it now, if the seller's not going to, you can pay for it now and you can save this expense, okay? Because if you don't, you're paying labor the next time. So while the tank's open, let's get an estimate. Let's have them see if they wanna do it. I'm an advocate of putting risers on because I can't tell you how many of my clients have backed up in their homes. Mm -hmm. Insurance doesn't cover it unless you have a septic rider, which most home insurance companies won't tell you. They just don't do it. So I encourage it. I think risers are incredibly valuable, especially for the DNK tanks. Yeah. Well, and I, I would like to, that because right now we all have to inspect the same way. So as long as our county is saying it's not required, I can't require it. I mean, I'd like to be able to just say, well, uh, you have to, to be able to sell your house, you have to have a riser. Risers are great. We all know they're great. But right now where I'm from uh, in our county, it's not required. So I can't, I can't make someone do it, but I, we really try hard to push it. What's that? This is, is the tank accessible for maintenance? Oh, so in our county, if it's accessible with a shovel, it's accessible for me. Correct. No. It doesn't say that on the online RV. Well, we, we would we would be failing every one we would, yeah, we would be failing every system. Yeah. 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 <laughs> how I how I present it to my if it doesn't have a water tight if it's not water, we're not failing, we're just answering the question on the online RME. It says that. It says yeah. water tight. It is not water tight. I would think if it is not accessible it means it's under concrete, under a deck, under the house. Yeah. That's the way it is in our county. If it's under concrete, underneath the asphalt, that's not accessible. Yeah. So what we end up doing a lot of the time a lot of realtors will come dress like this and they're like, oh, that's a lot of dirt. And they'll look at their buyer and they'll say, okay, if there's ever a problem, you're gonna have to dig that up. Is that something you wanna do? And most of them go, no, I don't wanna dig that up. company I'm gonna be honest I've dealt with it from both sides from both the real estate and the septic side the home warranty companies are, are trash okay it is it is a slight insurance policy that you pay for in advance you also have to read the fine print most of these warranty companies aren't covering septic they're not covering your well pump they might cover the water heater but what they're also going to ask you especially if it's at the time of purchase they're gonna ask you for a copy of your home inspection report. If your home inspection report indicates anything was wrong in the house, none of that's covered, none of it. So you're spending five, $600 on something that may or may not work. So just depends. I mean, for a first time home buyer who moves into their house, it might be a good option. You know, you still pay a service <coughs> call anywhere between 50 and $100 to get them out on site. But then you're fighting, just like with an insurance company to get this thing taken care of. And honestly, most of the time, we have dealt with three different home warranty companies because people say, no, my septic's covered. They never get reimbursement, ever. Yeah, we do make the homeowner pay us directly and then they get reimbursed from the, from the home warranty company. We've never been paid from a home warranty company. They don't pay. And they really try to make it the homeowner's fault. They'll call me, what did they do? What was going on? Like, it just backed up. I'm just a pumper, man. I don't want to get involved in your in your. So warranties. the warranties are sold. Um, there are warranty reps and warranty companies. Uh, 
honestly, they, they target really hard to realtors. They target really hard to first time home buyers. Um, there are people who really push them and are huge advocates of them. I just think if you have an emergency fund of 1,000 to 1,500 when you're buying a house, you're gonna be prepared for things that go sideways, personally. Yeah, they don't end up selling. Okay. I mean, yeah. what ends up happening on my side of it, if a septic fails and someone decides, I'm not gonna do anything about it, great, your house isn't gonna sell. You now took 100% of the population that buys and you've taken it to 10%. 10% are cash buyers, okay? Whatever that repair cost is, let's say it's 25,000. You're gonna need to reduce your sales price by 75,000 to even get interest in people buying it. That's not an exaggeration. Uh, most cash buyers aren't gonna wanna spend the money to do all of the work that you chose not to do. It's better in the long term, even if you have to go through like Craft 3. Craft 3 is a program you can do. Uh, I push that constantly in our area for realtors. Um, we've had several people benefit from it. I have a client who ended up getting a new system two years ago. They're on fixed income disability. They ended up getting a new system, worked out great for them. But if they didn't, their $400,000 house, I could probably squeak by with 300,000. Maybe, if I got a good cash investor who'd be willing to overlook the subject. And people just aren't willing to overlook it. And who, who is the main people in our area who buy those homes cash? They're flippers. flippers. They're flippers. They're investment. They're doing it for wholesale, and they don't ever want to pay 70% of value. They want more like 50% of value so they can make 10% profit because they're barely making 10% profit these days on these flips. There's not that much room in them anymore. Building material costs have gone up too much. If they have to replace the septic, they're looking at more money. So. I know you guys have had enough listening for today, so be kind to your realtors. I promise they're not all jerks. I try to be really <laughs> nice, uh, but I'm also married to a septic guy, so you know, for me it gets easier and easier to be nice to my septic people. <laughs>